Hello and welcome back. Uh, this video was taken on. Hey, what day was it? It was taken on Tuesday. That's right. Tuesday, October eighth. It's a rank game in Plat One. And someone asked on a, another video what my rank is, and I told them. So basically, set eleven was my first set. I peaked 260 LP masters, solo queuing, almost hit GM. Uh, this set, I didn't play too much. So currently, I'm sitting at a 60% rate. I think 60-61% win rate. Uh, plat 1, 50 LP, something like that. I don't remember when this set ends, but... I, I'll probably hit masters, at least. Uh, I think I'll take the time to do it. But uh, yeah, recently I've only been playing when I want to record videos, so I haven't really been playing much. I think I only have about 60 games, 60 to 70 games I've ranked this uh, this set. And yeah, about this particular match, uh, you can see here I'm holding all the fairy units, of course, because I got a Katarina. And then I just I already had Seraphine, I rolled into a Lilia, so I think, you know, maybe I get a fairy augment, I could just play fairy. And then I'm just organizing my bench. Put the Blitzcrank pair beside the Vanguards, right? Vanguards, Blitzcrank, Warwick, uh, Shapeshifter, Jace, Elise, and then just a Soraka. She's a mage. Can go with Seraphine potentially, or Sugarcraft. We can't do then I have a Titans. I'm just waiting though, of course. Titans is not very good if you play Fairy. It's not great with Vanguard either. It's not even really that good with Shapeshifter, because you would really need to put it on Briar, which is difficult to get. Here I'm looking at shop, I'm thinking I want this Neela potentially. Two warrior, right? I can level for two warrior if I want to win streak early on. I don't remember exactly what I sell, or if I even sell anything here. I think I sell Soraka and buy Neela. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Zillion Kassadin may be a little interesting, but kind of expensive. And here I don't want caretakers, it's very slow. Build different also, very mm, one-dimensional. And then oh, Martyr yeah. is generically good. Um, the Chrono Augment is only good with Jax reroll. I don't want to play that, I have zero Jaxes. I don't really have Jax items. And I already have a good fairy start. So I decide uh, I'm just going to take Price Fighter and try to win streak. Because I have a nice early game, I have some really good items. These items are great early game. Gargoyles is incredible. Uh, I get the fairy crown, that's incredible, right? I have three fairy and two warrior. Rageblade is incredible. I'd say Rageblade is a little weaker than Gargoyles early, but these items build into fairy perfectly because I can put Gargoyles on Rakan late game and I can put Rageblade on Callista late game. Callista, I personally like double Rageblade with fairy crown. And then Rakan, I usually like double gargoyles with um, the fairy armor, but it does depend. You, you want to be flexible, right? You can see I also have a tier component here, so I'm thinking I could just go Hand of Justice and keep it on the, the Katarina. Because I would say Katarina is like... she's basically your second carry when you're playing fairy. And here I'm hoping to win, right? If I win, I could potentially make 10 gold. Could also hold the, the pairs. I think holding the pairs is less greedy, because then I have a chance to sw uh, switch into multi-striker. Uh, potentially maybe warriors, multi-striker, fairy. Keeping my options a little open. And then I was just scouting to see everyone's augments to make sure no one's playing, you know, fairy, warrior, whatever. Just trying to check. And I noticed no one was playing fairy. So I do believe at this point I'm already thinking I'm probably angling to play fairy. But I can play more flex flexibly, right? I don't have to force anything yet. It's very early in the game. That is the strong thing about augments like Prize Fighter. Of course, Prize Fighter, you need a strong early game. I only took it because I have very good items and a very good opener. But um, good things about generic augments like like Martyr, for example, that was one of my options, is that 
you can always pivot into something different. So right now I'm angling fairy and I'm playing fairies, right? Trying to be as strong as possible. Play two Bastion, gives me armor MR on my whole team. Uh, makes the Lilio tankier, right? Nunu's tanky. But um, Prize Fighter, yeah, very nice augment. If you have the potential to win a streak early on. I'd say if you could get like a four win streak, it's already not that bad. Uh, if you get an eight win streak, it's pretty good. If you manage to get 12 wins, three components with it, plus the two base components, then it's really good. I think five components is incredible. But obviously, it's kind of a bit of a, um, a win more Series. augment. It's like you're already winning and it makes you win harder, right? It kind of secures the win. So usually you don't really want to take it unless you have a strong opener. And here I was saying, you know, what could I go for? Rage Blade component, another tank item. But I do want a glove the most. I didn't think I would get a glove, but it's already, as you can see, 100% chance to get a glove. There's two on the... And the, the last person didn't want a glove either. So I actually had a 100% chance to get a glove this carousel, which was interesting. Because they were both three stars. So I didn't really think it'd be possible. Here I get a lucky Hecarim pair. So I go ahead and take Nunu out for now. Two warrior, two bastion, three fairy. And then I go go ahead and buy this augment because... Or not augment, sorry. This, um, this charm. Because, I mean, it's very likely I win the next fight. If I kill a two star, it's two gold, uh, one net profit gold, right? So it's pretty much just one gold. If I kill a two star, if I kill a one star, it's whatever. In this case, if I kill Rumble, I get, you know, net one gold positive. Yeah, I see, I kill the Rumble, right? I get two gold from this. So I end up getting one extra gold from taking the charm. And if uh, my board looks confusing, I'm just playing the strongest board possible, right? Warrior enables Katarina a bit, and Bastion just makes my entire team tank here. And that's, you know, quite good, right? When you have two stacking items, like Fairy Crown plus Rage Blade, you just want fights to be a little longer, so you have more chances to stack them up. I'll make this look like magic. Here I see a Kali Rites, there's a potential to get three multi striker. Assuming I find another multi-striker, like Ash, Jax, they're the most likely, of course, because I'm level 5. Could also find Cassidy, right? It's not really that important which one I find. Here I switch sides because I notice this Hecarim, so I actually end up fighting the person I switch sides for. I notice this Hecarim has Bloodthirster and he's in the back right, and I really want him to be targeted as soon as possible. I want him to die first, if possible. So I put all my damage dealers in the bottom right. This way they end up hitting Hecarim sooner rather than later into the fight. Unfortunately, the uh, the portal bomb kills two units, so this guy gets to save a little health. But it's still good, right? I'm still win streaking. I just want to deal as much damage as possible and win every single fight possible. That's the only goals that matter. And I have really nice items, like really, really nice, right? These are incredible. I could easily go red buff here, rage blade with the bow. Uh, assuming I drop two random components, I can just, you know, throw something together. I'll take care of everything. Do I scout here? I should be scouting my opponents at this point. There's not much to look at on my own board. I would say if you scout during a PvE round, you should stand in the middle before you scout, so you can pick up the gold in time. Tear is not the best item, but it's okay, because it can be static shift. Here, unfortunately, I can't make 40 gold unless I sell these, so I do end up selling them. Because this puts me at 50 the moment after. I actually do end up finding her again, which is pretty nice. And you can see I have a few options here, right? I could go Runans, I could go Static Shiv, or I could go Adaptive Helm. I'm not a big fan of Adaptive Helm, especially 
on the units I'm playing. It could be okay on Lilia or even Katarina, but it's just not great late game. Static Shiv is always pretty good because it gives a large damage boost to actually Lilia, Seraphine, and Katarina. And these are my three fairy units, right? And then the cloak can always be a Bloodthirster, Dragon Claw, uh, Gargoyles. I think all three of these would be quite good. I'd be okay with any of them. So I'm a lot happier to hold a cloak than hold the other two components. Because this also gives me the highest chance of winning. And as you can see here, I am very confident I would have lost this had I not made the static shift. It gave me a ton of damage this fight because of the magic pen. Because you saw I actually did a accumulated 5800 damage. I think most of it was magic. So they got a huge boost from the magic pen. Here I skipped this augment and I skipped recom recombobulator. There's nothing really to recombobulate on my board. I skipped tiny titans because I just want to win. And then I see Exile's combat bandages. And yeah, of course I skip the other argument because lunch money doesn't help you win. It helps you win more. I, I want to win, I don't want to win more. Because I'm, I'm not sh quite strong enough to make sure I'm still win streaking. So I end up going for combat bandages. Because it is the strongest early game. And it also doesn't compromise my positioning. And then I do also level, play Ash. I get multi-striker. And I move the items to Ash as well. Because, well... The items are a lot better on a multi-striker, like Ash, than they are on someone like Seraphine. Wanna see the fireworks? And of course I pick up this uh, this fairy from the shop, Tristana. I am still looking mainly at fairy units right now, looking to play fairy, because I see it's still uncontested for the most part. I don't really see anyone playing any of the units. And you can see here, it's actually not very close. I actually killed him. I right, beat this person with 5 units alive, so I don't 10 damage to him. I don't know why that was in my team planner. I haven't played a TFT in a few days, so I don't remember the last game I played. Might have been double up, <laughs> I'm not sure. And then yeah, I'm just putting all the fairies and the Camille into my planner. And I need one more multi-striker of course. I was debating, but I just... I, I believe a debate here, I'm thinking about which one I would like to play. And then I do decide upon uh, Hecarim, because I don't think Warrior is that important. Though I, it's nice early game, right? I don't think it's that important, because it only affects Katarina, pretty much. It's like a small impact on her strength. Gives her a little healing, a little damage amp. And I switch sides for this guy in particular, as well. Because I see his left side is a. Uh, the left side of his front line is a lot weaker than the right side. The right side has Nunu and Tarek, so I, I, I want to kill with the left side first. This also gives Katarina a chance to wrap around and hit his back line. We do end up killing the. Uh, was it Cog in the back? And you can see the Ash, right, going crazy in the back over here. So much damage from Ash. She's actually top damage, right? 3700 almost. It's really good. She'd be doing a lot more if she had Last Whisper as well, right? There's no armor pen on my team. Or Evan Shroud, for example. Here, I definitely wanted a second Gargoyles. I think Gargoyles works well in pairs. So if you have one Gargoyles, getting a second one is quite nice. And that's even more true, in my opinion, for Rakan when you're playing Fairy. I think double Gargoyles plus Fairy Crown is really, really strong. Really, really strong. It's just great. But in this case, I just have to take a cloak. I don't really have a choice here. And you can see I did pick up some portal units in the last shop. And then I actually see there's a two-star Ezreal. And this this is very lucky, right? This is not no skill involved here. I, I high roll Callista. <laughs> so of course I, I buy her and take out Ash immediately. And then I decide it's worth leveling for. I get another cloak. So I do slam Dragon Claw. Because three cloaks, there's not much I can do with that other than make a Dragon Claw. And I'm at this two-star Ezreal. Also, I'm going to buy this charm here. If I win the next fight, I make three gold. So I'd be at 41 gold. I messed up, by the way. Um, pay no attention. I accidentally moved Katarina on the left. <laughs> it's very awkward. Uh, I wanted her on the right side. I don't think it really mattered. If anything, this might have been better. Because I ended up killing three of his backline units very quickly. But I was trying to be on the right side. 
But yeah, I bought the charm, so this way if I win this fight, I get to 41 gold, and I make interest again. And I do actually end up selling Ezreal, so I lost 1 gold for buying it to begin with. Um, but I just decide, there's no way I can play this for an, at least another 3 rounds, and that's a pretty long time. So I'd rather just sell it, because once I hit level 8, I'm going to roll down, and I would prefer to play... Probably five, five fairy, uh, three multi striker, and then maybe some other random strong unit. But regardless, I didn't think the Ezreal really had a spot on my team. He would be an itemless Ezreal, and he would have blaster, of course. But yeah, it's just it doesn't seem worth holding, especially since I can't play it immediately. So I did waste one goal on that. That was a mistake, very small mistake. And here again I switch right side because I see that Katarina most likely will have more openings if I put her there. Uh, she'll have more opportunity to hit people's backline. And you can see here, <laughs> this guy, uh, unfortunate for him, he didn't kill a single unit. My team is very strong right now. And this is what I'm thinking, you can see the team planner. I was like, you know, I could just play fairies, throw in Hecarim. Camille and Zareth, some strong units, multi striker, Arcana. It's all pretty good. Want to see the fireworks? And I was holding the Fiora. I thought maybe I could play two star Fiora if I find her randomly. Of course, it's this all depends on the roll down at level eight. Also. You can see I actually managed to win streak despite having some slightly awkward items. Like I had three cloaks, you know, I could only go charging claw, so it was pretty awkward. Here I instantly level because I find Callista and I say, okay, and then we get two star Callista. That would be lovely, right? At least I get two star Katarina. I don't even want to say that's lucky because I rolled a lot and I didn't find Rakan. Uh, I didn't find Callista. I didn't find, you know, Milio. That that would be lucky. Milio would be lucky. But I didn't find any of the units I really needed. So I pretty much rolled 50 gold for two Katarinas. Um, and I did get a lucky Zareth, which is nice, of course. But I really wanted Rakan and... Or pretty much, I just wanted one Callista. That was the, the main target here. Let's just roll down. Because I'm kind of stuck at level 8 until I find Callista. Otherwise, I, I'm i just a little weak now. Because, as I assume most people know this, but I'll explain. Most games, people want to get to either they reroll, right? Level 6, level 7 reroll, level 5 reroll, whatever. Or they rush to level 8 and they roll down for 4 costs. Uh, as for the augment, I think Blossoming Lotus was the only reasonable choice. It empowers my Katarina, empowers Callista, it makes my other very not very useful units quite a bit more useful. Um, and since I have multi strikers as well, it also gives them some nice damage and I have a lot of ranged units. And plus, uh, Fairy is one of sort of comps that likes extended fights, which gives Blossoming Lotus a lot of time to stack up and actually get value. But yeah, I was saying um, before about the roll down. I'm pretty much stuck here until I can find Callista two star, because people are going to be rolling at four two stage four round two, which you see I just hovered over, and I also hovered my prize fighter because if I win this fight, I get another component. That's why I left three components on bench because I want to see what I'm going to get here before I start combining items. But yeah, I'm stuck rolling at level 8. I can't level up quite yet. Because without Callista 2 star, I'm worried all the other people who rolled down at level 8, right? They leveled up to 8 here at stage 4 2. They leveled to 8 and they rolled down. I'm worried they're going to be stronger than me. Unless I find this 2 star Callista. So I'm just, you know, rolling. You could say aggressively, actually. Rolling a bit aggressively to try try and find this Callista. 
that's also why I rolled down to one gold. <laughs> yeah. And this is very awkward. So I actually have... I've gotten five cloaks this game. Uh, so I just go ahead and make another Dragon Claw. Because it's unlikely I'm going to be able to use these for anything else. And then I thought about putting the belt on Rakan Because it could be War Monks, Redemption, maybe. But... I didn't think there was a point, because this person looked quite weak. He's playing the Nunu Carry Augment, but it's a 2-star Nunu, and it's missing a third item. So, yeah, I, I just assumed I was much stronger than him, which I was. Here I'm cleaning up my uh, my team planner, just taking out the units I no longer need. And then I was looking at the Callista thinking to myself, if I get this Callista, I don't have to roll anymore. I can just stay level 8 and, you know, save gold, get to level 9. Unfortunately, they do take her. So my second thought is, uh, maybe I can take the rod. This person looked like they wanted it, but luckily I got it. And um, I just take the rod because I want second Rage Blade. Because even if I can't find the 2-star Callista, uh, the least I can do is give her perfect items. And then I just went ahead and <laughs> I muted the chat because uh, there was people typing on stuff and it wanted to bother the video. So yeah, I go double rage blade. I think this is by far my favorite item to my favorite items to go on Callista. And then I'm rolling for charms, combat charms, and also two star Callista. Not just the charms, right? Because I still have the Callista pair. So I really, really want to find Callista 2-star, and then I can definitely get to level 9 without an issue. And if you noticed, I'm sure some people have noticed uh, if they watched till this point, uh, I'm still playing 3 items on a 2-star Lilia. <laughs> And she is tanking quite a lot, right? It's a bit ridiculous. Um, I would say it has to do with the items, the but it especially has to do with the fact that she has the fairy crown or the fairy uh, fairy armor. It's very very strong. So, even just like I said earlier, uh, double gargoyles fairy armor on Rakan can be ridiculous frontline. Even if he's just tanking on his own, he can tank for. 10 to 20 seconds depending on your opponent so it's pretty much the same with Lilia she's obviously not quite as tanky but she is still very very tanky uh, you'll notice that here because she's tanking six units yeah she's tanking six units from my opponent and she just died it took 10 seconds for her to die getting hit by six units My opponent here had a very fun team. He's basically just playing Shapeshifter Dragon, but um, I think it's very nice. He, he took the, the Shapeshifter Augment as well as... What was it? Oh, I forgot what the other Augment he took was. Oh, Ascension, that's right. So he, he just has a super tanky team. Shapeshifter Augment gives him stacking health every round, permanent stacking health. And then he has Ascension, which procs to give him bonus damage. Here I was just reorganizing my team planner. The top row are the units I need immediately, and then I want to Zerith if I can level up later. Oh, you might be asking, oh, like, if I need Zerith, why did I sell him earlier? Well, I needed the gold more than the Zerith, because I wasn't going to play him as of right now. And here we have a lot of options, right? Redemption on bench, Morello, Shoujin, you know, Protector's Vow, Tear, blow, blow Buff, lots of things. But my instinct is to just go for Shoujin. And that's because I have Price Fighter, right? Hopefully no one forgot. <laughs> I have Price Fighter, which means I'm getting another component. Which means what exactly? It means I need to sort of depend on the combination of my last component plus the random component. So I think Belt has a lot more useful items that can be made. It could be Redemption, it could be Sunfire, Morello, Nasher's Tooth, right? 
So I think there's a lot more possible good items that go with belt rather than tier. And if you notice this fight, I did win, right? But it was only by one unit. And it was definitely only because I have two-star Callista. So this is what I was saying. It's very important. It was very important for me earlier to roll for the two-star Callista. And here I don't have a choice. I have to go Steric Gauge. Um, I'm not super sad about it. It's okay. I would rather have a, a third item for Milio, Katarina, or maybe a tank item for Rakan. But Steric Gauge is fine. It's it's kind of like a semi-tank item. It's a little bit like Warmonks, right? But for Bruisers. So I just go ahead and put it on the two-star Hecarim. He's a Bastion. You know, he does get bonus armor and MR, so it's not too bad. Here, unfortunately, I got shrouded, which is a little bit of an issue. But to be honest, I don't think I would have won this regardless. I don't have enough frontline quite yet to beat this person. He hits 3-star Wukong, 3-star Jinx, he has pumping up. He pretty much has everything he wants. His only weakness is that he's stuck level 7 with 10 gold currently. But he is probably the strongest person in the lobby right now. Because he got all the units he needed. And then here, you'll notice I hovered my loose streak. So I decided it's not really worth leveling, right? I just lost. What's the point leveling? I think there's not much point. Um, I feel like it'd be a waste of my gold, my interest. I might as well just lose, right? Because health is kind of like a resource. And in this case, do I care more about maintaining my health pool? Or more about going for first place this match and uh, the obvious answer is for me to go first i think i could secure a second place easily if i just level up right here oh also Emilio dropped gold very lucky <laughs> yeah yeah that was nice but um basically it's worth sacrificing even half my health pool to make sure i have enough gold at level nine to roll for the units i need which would Mainly be a Recon 2. Melee 2 would be nice, but uh, Camille would also be nice. Here I was checking if anyone needed any of these emblems, but if even if they needed them regardless, I can't actually stop them. I don't have a choice. I'm last pick. Right? So I was just thinking, uh, what could I use here? Zerith would be nice, maybe, but they took it. Deathcap, I don't... I think Deathcap actually would have been quite good, but if you notice, I just talked about the opponent who's playing Jinx and Wukong. I'm a bit worried about that opponent, so I decide to take the Bramble Vest, because I believe that the other people in the lobby will end up dying before, pretty much before he does. I think he's going to live the longest, and I would be second, because I have so much health left. So I go for Bramble Vest. In this case. So this is kind of like a targeted uh, item selection. I know Bramble Vest is best against the Jinx Wukong player. So I take it. This shapeshifter play is also a little scary. But I'm not worried because he doesn't have enough health left. Also, I'm not sure if um, that sound is coming through, but there's a train passing by a little bit away from my house over over here. <laughs> so that's what that noise is, if anyone heard it. And here I do level because I'm not really sacrificing anything to level. Also, I pretty much have the team I want at this point. I do think having a Camille 2-star would be stronger than a Kali giving Warrior to Katarina. And then I also want to get a Zareth. Though I was contemplating if I should just go Tom Kench over Zareth. But the, the issue is I really want the Zareth the Zareth um, selection. Arcana selection. So, because I don't really have many traits for Tom Kench selection, 
and then the AD and durability would be okay from Hecarim. But I think I'd rather have true damage, if possible. So that's why I'm holding Tom Genge. But I do want actually to find a Zerith again. And then of course guys, don't forget, if you use a remover, or if you have zero removers on your bench from during a PvE round, uh, when you kill the PvE units, they will drop another remover. That got implemented a few weeks ago. So that's why I used remover on Lilia finally. Because I'm going to get one right here. And, you know, it's a 100% chance, right? You don't lose anything. There's nothing we can't do together. Beauty and life. Jeweled Gaunt. <laughs> so the other three items I obviously can't take. Jeweled Gauntlet, Archangel Stamp would be okay on Milio, but uh, I really want a third item for Katarina. She's been doing the most work, aside from Callista, of course. Edge of Night also would have been quite good. Uh, the, the problem with that is I didn't know who I'd give Fairy Crown to. I could have given it to Milio maybe, but um, I was a bit skeptical. I do think I should have positioned my Katarina more safely though. That's a bit of, bit of an issue on my part. This guy actually got quite strong. His uh his infinitely stacking health is starting to do something. But if you look at the health in the lobby, I played really well early game, right? So you notice I have 70 health left and my opponents are at 40 and 2 health so you know they're quite a bit away from being able to kill me and then here i don't know if anyone would guess this so i'll explain the reason i'm holding Zareth and tom kench even though i said i'm pretty sure i'm playing tom kench for true damage is because if i find a fairy emblem on the next carousel then that means i get to take out seraphine and I can play 3 Arcana at level 10. So I was thinking quite far ahead here because I was assuming I might not be strong enough to win quite yet. And it, this fight I didn't really think much of because I have 1 star Recon. So I wasn't too worried about this. And the other opponent died, so now it is just 1v1. I, I do end up finding time. the Camille. I don't actually know if 1 star Camille is worth it. Or if I'd rather have Warrior. I think Warrior might have been better than Camille. I couldn't decide in my head. But I, I do end up playing Camille here. Because I just think to myself, well, you know, if she lives long enough, she can stun a few units. It's not that bad, right? It's probably better than having 10% healing and such on Katarina. I get Shrouded, I think, here. Yeah, my opponent has Shroud. I kind of forgot about it in a moment. When I was singing about Akali and Camille. I do position a bit better for it later on. And you can see here the Bramble Vest is doing quite a lot. Otherwise there's no way I would have lived through that. The Jinx focusing on my Recon. And just like I mentioned, there is a fairy emblem. So now this means I get to take out Seraphine and I get to play another Arcana unit, which is a massive deal. Because Seraphine doesn't really do anything, if we're being honest. Um, she does very minimal damage. It, it isn't bad, but it's just not great. It's definitely not better than, you know, more Arcana true damage. Here I roll for a charm, I get an amazing one. Uh, Yordle Spirit is very, very good. And then I actually sell everything to level immediately and play through Arcana. Well, not quite, because I sold the, the Tom Kench. I think this was actually a small mistake. I maybe should have waited. I maybe should have waited and then leveled up the next round. But because I beat my opponent the last round, I assumed I'd be able to beat him this round as well. And I did actually outposition him very, very much. Um, 
I moved last second so he wouldn't have time to react to my repositioning. And you can see here I was correct about beating my opponent. Now he's 1 HP. This is very, very unfortunate. Uh, I, I did want to buy this for the gold, but I really wanted to win the fight. And then <laughs> I find a I find a charm that costs one gold too much. So it's very sad. And since I did find a charm that costs too much, I just go ahead and play Chrono. Because I assume Chrono will be a bit better. Here, I think he mooses Jinx, which wins him the fight, most likely. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he ends up moving his Jinx. He realized Jinx was the, the problem. Jinx got stuck on my Rakan, so he ended up losing the other fights. And you can see she ends up walking into my back line because Rukon is too far away. I do wonder if I would have lost this anyways because I didn't have a charm. I think if I had the charm, I could have won. It would have been definitely a lot closer. And I end up open selling Karma here. And the reason I open sell Karma is because I'll make interest, which gives me so slightly fun. more gold to find Tom Kench with. Though I think I end up losing one gold because I don't sell these legendaries on my bench fast enough. <laughs> so it's, it's another small mistake. I end up losing another gold randomly here. Yeah, I clicked sell on Milio, but it didn't go, go off on time. And then I actually get anti-heal, which is kind of massive, right? I didn't have anti-heal this entire time. And then I go ahead and buy Sticky Fingers. I'm pretty much playing to win next fight, not this fight. I don't find Tom Kench either. Or sorry, Tom Kench too, but I do have one Tom Kench at least. Here, I was just trying to make my opponent confused. And then I couldn't move Rakan in time. Uh, I took a little too long, so... I do believe I end up losing this fight because Rukon is on the left side again. Which means Jinx can walk into my backline. Yeah, so she does walk into my backline here. But it's funny because I actually... I'm fairly sure I would have won this if Olaf wasn't in my backline. So actually, yeah, Olaf ended up being the issue this fight. I think that was just a bit random. Here, I'm looking for a charm. I get the same charm twice in a row which is quite bad and then i get a charm which is not that great um but i do take it and you might be wondering why i take this well for one i can't afford any other charm really and for two i think positioning matters more and on top of that i have static shiv but i don't have armor pen right which pretty much just means I'm pretty confident I deal more damage if all of my damage gets converted to magic damage because I have magic pen from static ship but I don't have any armor pen. So I assume this is just a damage boost for my team. Even though generally these damn like AD to AP conversion and vice versa are not very good. This ends up being a little close but uh, I do win. Uh, but yeah, that's the match. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and yeah, please like the video if you like it. And last thing also, uh, Callista is very strong right now. If you want to win games, play more Callista uh, or play more Varus, either one. But yeah, GG. See you guys later.